startling tale of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. A monologue in verse with additional dialogue by William Shakespeare, written by Geoffrey McSkimming. Prince Hamlet was a gloomy fellow. He dressed in black, never yellow, or green, or red, or even blue. T'was black, and nothing else would do. The reason for his melancholy, and his no longer feeling jolly, was that his father, who was king, had gone and done the dying thing. He'd shuffled off this mortal coil, and now lay buried in the soil within the grounds of Elsinore, the castle where he'd ruled before the candle of his life was snuffed, and Hamlet's life had all got stuffed. But before the king could be forgotten, Hamlet found that something rotten had led to his pa's swift demise, and this shall be the first surprise which in the minutes coming hence you'll hear of. Oh, there'll be suspense and action, drama, mystery too. I hope it's not too much for you. So if you care to settle back, I'll tell you of this prince in black, but be aware. The story's sad. A ghost appears. A girl goes mad. You'll meet a skull with a cheeky grin. And Hamlet's obsessed by his spotty skin. Part the first. In the dead waste and middle of the night. Late one gloomy, frosty night, when the moon was obscured in her flight, across the sky, by a sea of cloud, Noel, a soldier, shrieked aloud. Ah! he squealed. He dropped his spear and trembled wildly with the fear that rose in him at such a rush, like a lavatory gets when you press the flush button. Well, you know what I mean. I'm sure you've done it. I'm sure you've seen how fast the water rushes round. I'm sure you've heard the gurgling sound that resonates about the bowl. Well, that's what happened to poor Noel. Ah! he shrieked into the night. His hands were shaking. His face turned white. His heart was kicking like a newborn foal as the terror flushed all over Noel. Then, up onto the battlements, hurried two more soldier gents. The first was named Horatio. What's going on, Noel? What ho? The other soldier, named Marcellus, inquired gravely, What is it? Tell us! Oh, Noel stammered, turning green. You won't believe what I've just seen. Just wait until you hear my story. I feel like I'm a lavatory. Enough, Horatio interjected. Tell us what have you detected that's put you into such a state? Marcella said, don't make us wait. Well, said Noel, his hands a quiver, something's made me drop my fliver. Yes, yes, Marcella said, we know. Get on with it, urged Horatio. Oh, all right then, said Noel, don't fret. My friends, you ain't heard nothing yet. Here I was, alone and dutifully, doing my sentry look out beautifully, when all of a sudden, with no prior warning, here, in the dead quiet gloom of morning, upon the battlements, yonder there, I saw a ghost with matted hair. Marcella scoffed, your hair looks fine. Noel retorted, no, not mine. It was the ghost whose hair was matted. I saw his locks were vilely plattered with spiders, worms, with blood and gore, and dirt and mud, and much, much more accumulated from the grave. Horatio said, oh, Noel, you rave, the way you always tend to do when you've had too much homemade brew. Noel rolled his eyes. I will debunk your theory that I am drunk. I'm stone-cold sober. Furthermore, I'll prove that here at Elsinore this apparition manifested before my eyes. You need them tested, Marcella scoffed. You're seeing things. Next you'll tell us pigs have wings and Saturn's arcs are made of honey. Ha ha, said Noel. Very funny. But then... Horatio's spine went rigid, his blood ran cold, his hands turned frigid, his eyes grew bigger than a plate, his heart began to palpitate. Oh dear, he gasped, I think Noel's right. Look over there, this wretched night is truly gruesomer than most. I see it too, the matted ghost. If you want to find out more, buy the book. Thank you.